How you doing then guys? Uh, today is a bit of an experiment for me using a clip-on microphone. Let's see how this sounds. Uh, I hope it sounds all right. Loads of wind noise on recent videos which I've been doing my head in. Anyway, today's video, I bought another TT. What can I say? I've got an addiction. Here she is. There you go. Now this is, <clears throat> uh, I don't know what year it is, but it's a BAM, if that helps. Uh, it is relatively low mileage. That's not bad. And it runs. How much did I pay? Can't tell you that. Basically the story goes that the customer had this for a few years, maintained with the same garage all the time. It got to that point where it started to develop a bit of a noise in the engine and the garage told him it wasn't worth repairing so he bought another one. Let's put this microphone near the engine, let's see how it sounds. I've got no idea if this is going to sound any good or not. I need to get used to this whole concept using an external microphone. Anyway. Sounds alright at the minute. I think it's when it gets warm that it's worse. Um, but what I plan to do with this one is take you through the journey. Uh, I bought this one as a fixer-upper. So it has got damage across the grill there, it's got a little scuff on the headlights, this headlight is a bit dim, uh, we're missing the centre cap but that's no big deal, um, other than that the bodywork is straight and true, looks good, a few little minor marks to worry about. But the main thing for me is that mechanically I can get this sorted and then it's a good car uh, to be able to sell on uh, and keep it on the road rather than what probably would have happened to it, it getting broken for parts or scrapped. So, you know, working, oh, we've got one line missing in the display by the look of it, maybe a couple at the bottom there. But overall, this car's in good condition, I'm happy. Uh, let's see if this engine's developed any more noise. There's the issue. There's a bit of a knock. Now I can't get the car into the unit at the minute because it's jam packed full with um, customer cars and the track project uh, but what I will be doing is just whipping a couple of bits off now see if I can spot anything obvious um, yeah just uh, I've got something to be working with um, if I can't find anything today then it'll just have to wait till I can strip it down fully in the unit uh, but the idea with this one guys is just to take you on the journey of my fault finding and diagnosis um, and just see where it takes us so if you subscribe then you'll be notified of the next video in this sequence um, and then yeah you can you can join me for the ride anyway before we do that I'll go grab a couple of tools we'll whip a few obvious bits off and have a look see what's going on so first thing I'm going to do take the charge pipe off and have a look down here uh, into the side of the engine now there's a small chance there's a very small chance that it's just a bad hydraulic damper on the cam belt um, and so if that's the case, happy days. So we might as well rule that out first either way. So a lot of people send me videos um, asking if I can diagnose, you know, faults from 
a phone recording of an engine. It's just not possible, guys. Yes, I might be able to give you some sort of idea and something to look at, um, but it really isn't very obvious from a phone where the noise is coming from. Uh, healthy engines sound awful on phone recordings. Uh, I'll be interested to listen back to this recording. Um, the knock should definitely come through on this because uh, it is really bad. But, you know, I, I can't do it, guys. I just can't. I'm not Mystic Meg. Um, I, I try and help out where I can. But really, without having the car in front of me, being able to listen to it from different angles, touch and feel different things, unplug things, everything like that. I, I just can't diagnose your car over the internet, I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, please don't send me videos to my messenger or to my email of an engine asking me if it sounds right. Because it won't sound right because it's a phone recording that I'm probably then gonna play through my phone. It's just gonna sound awful. Anyway, uh, charge pipe can move out of the way now. It's all still a little bit warm. Cambo's got good tension to be fair to it. So it's unlikely to be that. An interesting one to check will be the compression across all four cylinders. So that's what I'm gonna do now, just cause um, be interesting to see what it's doing. So I've just got to whip this all out of the way, take the coils out, take the sparks out one by one, you know the drill. So we're going to take these apart. So take these off. We're going to need to repin this plug. Get a new plug for it because we don't want broken coil plugs. I hate broken coil plugs because you can't get them off properly. And then, what we want to do, because we don't want any fuel going in, we're just going to undo the injectors. Yeah, we've just done this rocket gasket, has absolutely filled it with sealant. There's a gasket there for a reason, you don't need to add all that sealant. I suppose I should do a video on the rocker gaskets at some point because I do see lots of weird and wonderful ways of doing it when it really is quite a simple job. So maybe I'll do that on this car, who knows. So we're gonna take this spark plug out. That was loose. Zero effort required there. It's always weird. Doesn't look too shabby. Was actually probably replaced very recently within its life. It's always nice. So we get the compression tester. I've already got the correct fitting in place. You just drop it in there. Have a twizzle about until you feel it catch the thread. Turn it up until it stops. We're going to turn this so that we can see it from the ignition. Can't really see it from there, can we? That's a bit better. So writing these down, I'm just gonna go back through the video and look at the reading. Okay, cylinder one looks good. Now we just need to see what the rest are looking like in comparison. So what have we got there? 100 and, see, 180 and change. Not too bad. And then we're gonna repeat the process across all four cylinders. So let's get the readings.
There's lots of fancy tools that you can get for measuring depths of things and all that stuff. I'm going to keep this really simple for you, okay? Ghetto version. This is, so this is a guard off my um, grinder, the bench grinder. And this is just a bit of welding rod. So I can put that there, that sits across the top, like so. And then I can just make a mark. Oh, I'm going to need two hands for this, aren't I? Let's see if I can record this or not. Yeah, there you go, look. So I can just put that there, and I can just make a little mark against the side of the rod. Just there, look, right? So then I can put it into the other cylinder and see if it sits the same. Very, very simple. So we're going for this cylinder here. Make sure this is sat level. Now, they look about the same. Let's check the middle too, see how they look. I can already see from there, look, it looks the same. So there's a very unscientific way to prove, well, prove, to guesstimate that both rods are probably all right. Uh, I'm gonna redo the test for one and four, but two and three looked cock on with each other. One and four, the slight difference that I got was probably down to my technique, so I'm just gonna redo that. My unscientific way of showing that one and four and two and three uh, are all sitting at the same heights as each other. So if one of them was bent, the rod, then obviously it would sit slightly lower uh, than its counterpart. So, rods aren't bent, cam belt's good. Given the amount of sealant around that rocker cover, is there a chance, is there a chance an oil gallery has got blocked? There is a chance. So if I could have this in the unit now, I would be taking the sump off and just having a look at the, um, the strainer. Um, I did try to disconnect the VVT, it didn't make a difference. I do also need to confirm it's actually timed correctly as well. I need to do that. Um, but I think it probably is. I don't think that's the issue just because if the timing's out and it's got VVT, then the VVT makes a noise trying to compensate for the bad timing. But this is making a noise with the VVT unplugged. So, yeah, it's unlike. Sorry. Because it's unlikely that it's actually a timing issue. My gut, and this is, I felt this way the entire time, is that it's an oil starvation issue of some description. And in which case it's going to be a new engine. However, compression of between 170 and 180 across all four isn't too bad. So if it is, um, well, we'll find out. So uh, I'm at the point now where I don't really want to take much more apart because at the minute it's drivable to get it into the unit, which is key. Because um, I need to be able to maneuver it around in the unit. So I don't want to disable it anymore. So I'm going to put it back together. Um, and yeah, a next point will be investigating potential oil starvation. Um, so I could get the oil pressure test right if I wanted to, but I want to have a look inside and see what's going on. Uh, I'm hoping it could be something as simple as like a um, big end bearing, maybe. And I'm hoping that it then didn't score the crank and that we can get away with it, maybe. Who knows? We'll find out. Anyway. Thanks for sticking with me to this point. Um, we shall pick it up in the next video and see what's going on. Cheers, guys.